Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 592. Why do I have to take supplements and diet and exercise? I just want hormones. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we're going to talk about something I talk about every day in my office, but I'm going to talk about it in a way that explains why I do the things I do in my office. And uh, I think that's helpful. Um, You know, when we're five or four, we always say, why, why, why? But we never really stop asking why. But sometimes we just get too tired to ask why, or there's other things going on in my office that are more important. So today we're going to talk about why I do the things I do to take care of patients. So I, I actually titled this, do I have to take my supplements, diet and exercise? I just want hormones. Because I hear that frequently at the beginning of my relationship with a patient, generally not after the first visit. So, um, but, but sometimes we, I do, and then I have to explain this. Uh, when I first started BioBalance Health, um, I had found the most effective way to treat postmenopausal and premenopausal women with testosterone and postmenopausal women with both testosterone and estrogen. I also found the best way to deliver testosterone to men, and that is bioidentical hormone pellets placed under the skin. So that was the beginning of m- opening my eyes to preventive medicine. It turns out that giving people over 40 their hormones back, their sex hormones back, is the first step and foundation for them, you, to feel healthy the rest of your life. And no, we don't stop getting hormones. We get hormones the rest of our lives unless, of course, we don't want to feel healthy or be healthy. So the first step is to just get back what you're missing and get it back in the safest way and get it back in in a way that you don't have to dose yourself every day or worry about it. It's, it's three times a year you have to get pellets if you're female and twice a year if you're male. So it's not a lot of rules to follow. However, I found that this foundation is the reason that people who follow other parts of my, my treatment plan can lose weight, can get healthy, can um, actually... Uh, resolve illnesses and not have to take the medicine for certain illnesses. So, so it's very important for my patients to not just get the foundation of feeling better, just I just want hormones, but to also do these other things. So uh, when a patient comes to my office, I not only look at their hormone levels, I look at their health tests like their lipids, their inflammation uh, level, the, uh, their blood count, uh, their white count, their, infl- their uh, immune system uh, viability, uh, other things that might cause them trouble, like their homocysteine, the way they metabolize B vitamins. I look at all of those things because I have found over the last 20 years that I can't just give you your hormones and expect you to be completely healthy. It is the key to then opening the door so that when you do follow exercise, diet, uh, supplements, and other different treatment plans, they will now work. But if you do them without the hormones, generally it's very frustrating and and none of those things are going to get you to where you want to be, which is healthy. So um, a lot of times I have patients who I I do the whole treatment plan, tell them exactly... um, the supplements they should have because of their lifestyle or where they live in the country or the foods that they eat or don't eat. I try to give them the, the nutrition that they are not getting in their food. And in general, nobody gets enough nutrition in their food, not even me. 
it's very hard to get enough protein to get a small amount of carbohydrate in this American diet and to get healthy fats, but not unhealthy fats. So, so oftentimes we need to have the vitamins and the minerals that act as um, enzyme. They make the enzymes work, coenzymes. So these are necessary to make all of the medical or medical and um, and and chemical reactions in your body that happen all day long work. You need to have them. They're ne necessary or essential. So that's why my patients need supplements, a specific diet, but they also need to exercise. I mean, we are no different genetically than our ancestors were who, I mean, human, the human race started on the savanna in Africa and, and we ran all day, we caught our food, we gathered, we hunted, we did things physically and our body hasn't changed since then. We have to still exercise every day or our bodies were made for that, but we don't use our bodies anymore. We just use our brains. So uh, this is something that is necessary, but it's necessary also to find the exercise that you can actually enjoy and do. Not everybody has the same personality. Not everybody likes the same exercise. Everybody is an individual, and we have to find the way to find the exercise for you. So that's part of putting it all together for my treatment plan in my office. There's a law called the law of intention in medicine. That is that when a patient comes to a doctor, um, the doctor has to enter into an agreement with the patient, and this is unsaid, it's not, it's not verbal, but by the patient coming to the doctor for help, and, and the doctor being a doctor who is there to help, there has to be an agreement between the two people that the doctor has the intention or is going to do what she can to heal a patient. And then the patient has to have the intention to follow the doctor's orders and do what she can on her end to come out with a healthy answer. It isn't just the doctor. It's not just a pill. It's not just a computer program. It is two people entering into agreement. I mean, that is what healing is all about. And that's what doctors are being replaced by computers with. But we've also lost some of this ability to do this because we have such little, such small periods of time allotted for each patient because of how um, insurance companies have whittled down the amount of money they pay to doctors per patient. So it's not necessarily the intention of the doctor to do this. But this is in a perfect world and in my practice where I want this to ha this relationship to happen between me and my patients, and I want it to happen between my nurse practitioners and my patients, this is essential for my patients to get better. So what that really looks like is I develop a treatment plan for you individually, telling you the things that I believe are going to make you better, the medicines or the supplements or the foods or the exercise, and you are going to then agree to carry those out, and then we'll get back together and see how it worked see if you've made progress. We'll do lab to measure that. We can do other things to measure it, like look at your symptoms. But that's the law of intention that is inherent in, in a doctor-patient relationship. I have had thousands of patients who have followed this and become healthy. I have had a much smaller percentage of my patients who have decided that it's just too much trouble. They're just going to come in, get their pellets, and, and then ask why they're not thin and why they're not healthy and why they don't feel better. But if you poison yourself with bad food all day or you don't move or you don't take supplements that are absolutely necessity for, for you to have the right, um, the right chemical reactions in your body to keep you healthy, then you're going to stay sick. Even if you have, have your pellets and you get a sex drive and you get a little more energy, you're not going to be completely well. So this is important to not just take the easy way out and, um, and just come back for another visit, not do anything your doctor says. That's really uh, a waste of time for you and your doctor. So you have to have the intention and the belief that you're going to do it. Now, there, the other thing I have to explain all the time is that 
I, this is not going to work if you choose to do things in series, meaning I'm going to take my pellets, then I'm going to stop taking pellets and I'm going to diet, then I'm going to stop dieting and then I'm going to exercise, then I'm going to stop exercising and I'm going to take a pill. If you do things in series like that, nothing is ever going to work together. You're not going to be healthy. That just doesn't work. And for an example of this, um, I had a patient in, the, in our weight loss program. My nurse practitioner asked me to come in. And this is actually a, a number of patients fit this bill. So I'm not telling just one person's story, so don't anybody get paranoid. Um, but we give our, our weight loss patients, besides the hormones, we give them the, uh, a, a diet, a particular type of diet. We give them supplements that they should take. We give them medication because it's a medical weight loss program. We follow their body composition with a machine that can tell if they cheated or if they didn't follow the directions. Um, we also do blood work to see if they, if the blood work follows a progression that should happen if they're getting better. We also um, give them probiotics so that their gut bacteria gets better because a lot of your health is by feeding the bacteria in your intestines. And very, they call it the gut biome. And that's a very important area in your body. So we, we also provide those recommendations. And, and all of these things should be followed to get the desired outcome. But it turns out that um, one or a group of my patients said, well, I just don't like taking pills. So I'm just not taking that pill. And I'm not taking those supplements. And instead of exercising every day, I think I'll exercise once a week. Um, and honestly, 20 minutes of fitness is not really exercise. You do that once a week, that is not what I'm talking about. You have to exercise every day or every other day, at the very least. So um, I'm not a fan of 20 minutes to fitness because it, it tells you a non-truth about losing weight. In any case, um, this group of patients basically chose to just take the easy way out, which is, is common. Um, but when we... when my nurse practitioner was frustrated because she didn't know what went wrong. She gave her the right advice, but she didn't, and she didn't question her directly about whether she was doing it or not, but she got the idea she was doing it. So it took me to go in and say, okay, now we're going to ask direct questions. How long did you follow the diet? Eh, well, about a week. Well, these visits are two months apart. A week doesn't do it. You have to do this the rest of your life. You have to change how you eat the rest of your life. Did you stop eating candy as a snack and, and soda? Well, no, I love them. I'm going to keep eating them. Well, then I said, then you shouldn't waste your money on us because this is just not going to work. You, if, if, that, if you love that more than being healthy the rest of your life, then that is your choice. But we're not where you should be because we're looking for results. Well, it turns out she took one of the medications, but not the other that we had added to it. She, you know, she made her personal choice, but her personal choice was bad for her health and, and devastating to her weight loss because she didn't lose anything. Her fat level stayed the same, and she didn't gain any muscle, and she wasn't feeling any better, and that's exactly what you would predict with doing things halfway. So... So if you're going to get direction from your doctor, you don't get to pick and choose. You have to do all of it. So um, what I, I think sometimes pictures help us understand this process. And I call it doing your, uh, or, or participating in your treatment in parallel. So if you envision a six lane highway and Every lane is leading to the same goal or the same place. Um, then you have to, you have one lane. The first lane that is basically for people over 40 is absolutely um, ne necessary, and that is replacing testosterone that is missing. Testosterone is going to give you a sex drive, make your brain feel better, improve your immune system. It's going to make you younger. It's going to help you burn calories if you use the proper diet, of course. You can't just eat anything. That's not healthy. Um, t 
Testosterone works in every cell in your body and is in both men and women and is critical to us feeling normal, young, and healthy and staying young as we get old. So that's lane one. Lane, and estrogen is critical too, but in some people with breast cancer, we can avoid estrogen and still keep them relatively healthy. Now, lane two, the fuel you put in your body is absolutely critical. The amount that you eat and what you eat is critical. So when you are um, on the proper diet for you, and we pick a diet for patients that's based on their blood type, but also based on their, their eating problem. Are they always hungry? Are they, all, are they never feeling full? Do they um, snack all the time? Do they eat out of nervousness? I mean, we have to ask these questions to figure out what your problem really is to decide how we can, we can treat you to make your diet work. So, and also how we choose the medicines for your weight loss. So if you think of food as fuel, you're not going to eat candy because candy is just, it's just, I mean, it's just flash in the pan, brings up your insulin, makes fat, and gives you 10 minutes of happiness and then it's over. So basically, that's not the kind of fuel you need. You need the long-lasting fuel, which is complex carbohydrates, but also a lot of protein actually as many grams of protein as you weigh every day. That's how much you need to eat. And that's going to require protein shakes and protein bars, usually for women to get up to, like I'm 132 pounds, 132 grams of, of a protein is a lot, which entails meat and peanuts and, and other nuts and protein shakes and uh, cheese, yogurt, things like that during your day. It's hard to get there, but to maintain and build muscle, is it's very important to have enough building blocks for those muscles. So remember that when you look at food, it's not just, oh, it's fun. It's also, oh, it is fuel for you for the next, tw you know, next 24 hours or next eight hours until you eat again. That's lane two. Lane three, lane three is all the things you didn't eat in your diet and didn't get from the sun, like vitamin D because you weren't outside or you live north of Florida, um, you're not, you're not going to get enough vitamin D in North America or in England or anything, anybody who is uh, above the 30th parallel, you're not, the latitude lines, 30th parallel, anyway, 30th parallel, you're not going to get enough sun and if you do get enough sun, the darker you get, the less you absorb vitamin D. So everybody needs to take vitamin D 5,000 5, units a day. And some people even need more because their gut biome isn't very good and they can't absorb the vitamin D. So, so we have to test vitamin D levels, and we do. So supplements are much more than, oh, you know, a fad. They're much more than, oh, you take every supplement that there's offered. Supplements should be chosen for you in accordance with your diet, but it also in accordance with what you need based on your labs, based on um, your activity level. If, you're, if you are sitting most of the day versus you're running marathons, you need a whole different set of supplements because you're going to have to take supplements for excessive muscle use and um, exercise, you're going to need more testosterone, you're going to need more carbs, you're going to need more food for that particular activity than somebody who sits all day and doesn't ever do that kind of activity. It should be, you should be able to get that kind of advice from either a dietitian, which I'm not sure that they follow this mentality of how they decide what you should eat, because everybody is not the same, especially in what they should eat and how much. So, um, but your doctor should be able to tell you how many grams of protein you should eat a day or how many grams of carb. So this is very important. And the, um, say you have, um, say you have heart disease in your family. Well, you should be on CoQ10, which is a, which is a, a liver coenzyme that you can take orally that helps you process uh, your lipids, uh, and your cholesterol. That's just kind of a given. If you're on a statin, you should be on 200 milligrams of CoQ10 because it takes it out of your system. So there are, there are also some other drugs that require um, 
supplementation for the drug to continue to work and for your body not to become deficient. Um, metformin requires that patients take methyl B12 with it because it uses up your B12. So methyl B12 is, everyone can take that one. Not the regular B12, cyanocobalamin, not everyone can take that. So I always, re I always suggest methyl B12 because everyone can metabolize that. And that will help with your diabetic control and also your weight loss with metformin. Okay, lane four. All going in the same direction, all heading toward health and health and longevity. We, none of us want to live a long time in a nursing home. We want to live a long time walking, traveling, seeing our friends, seeing our grandbabies, watching our grandchildren, you know, grow up and, and graduate from college and being able to walk into the auditorium. I mean, this is all just kind of a common uh, goal of American humans. We, we want those things, but we have to work for them. Um, so level lane four is your medications. Sometimes you just have to take pills. I don't like taking pills. No one likes taking pills. That's not an excuse. No one likes taking pills. But if you need them, then you need to take them. And if they're prescribed for you, you should take them unless you're allergic to them. And if you're allergic to them, you have to tell the doctor what the reaction was, and they can give you something else in its place. So it's very important to treat disease by taking the medications. We um, sometimes... I use metformin for weight loss. And then patients go to their other doctor, and the other doctor goes, well, you're not diabetic. I don't know why you're on that. Well, we use it for weight loss because so many people are insulin resistant. So a patient who's insulin resistant but not yet diabetic is on the road to being a diabetic, but I'm going to stop them from being a diabetic and help them lose weight so they no longer are at risk. So that you have to ask the doctor who told you to take that medication why and ask the questions of that one not take advice from other physicians or nurse practitioners who don't really know why the doctor gave it to you. There's a lot of things that are used off-label. Um, not all drugs for weight loss are forever either because many of my patients who take metformin, they get down to their ideal weight. They don't have to take it anymore. Unless they have diabetes, they really don't have to take it anymore. So that's something that, okay, I'm successful. I lose my weight. My blood sugars and my insulin and my hemoglobin A1C are now normal. Now I don't need that drug. But you have to be told that you don't need that drug by your doctor. You can't just like decide not to take it for no reason. Okay, two more, two more lanes. One lane, the, lane five is feed your gut biome. You have more bacteria in your gut, in your intestines, then you have cells in your body, and you have billions of cells. So you have billions of bacteria in your gut. Some of them are good for you. Some of them are dangerous. So you should feed the good ones, and that's what probiotics are for, to give you many different types of bacteria that are good for you. Your gut does more than just take your nutrition and put it into your blood. Your gut makes the hormones for whether you're uh, full or not full in terms of being, uh, be eating a meal and knowing that you're, you're finished. Um, they make your feel-good hormone, dopamine. They make your happy, not depressed hormone, serotonin. They make lots of neurotransmitters that help your, your brain work. If you don't feed those little bacteria in your intestines, then you aren't going to feel well and you will get diseases such as autoimmune diseases from leaky, your leaky gut. It, those bacteria are protecting the lining of your intestines. You can't absorb your medications if your gut doesn't have the right bacteria. You're, if you don't have the right bacteria, you're going to gain fat. That's just what happens. So we are symbiotic with bacteria. The bacteria that's in our gut is helping us and we are feeding them. So what feeds bacteria? Well, Fiber. Fiber feeds bacteria and, and different kinds of fiber and different kinds of vegetables. So a salad a day is a really good way to feed your gut biome. If that's not possible, you should be taking probiotics. And, and most people should take it because 
in this day and age of everything is so clean, we don't have a lot of dirt around us. We no longer let our kids eat mud pies like I did when I was a kid. We don't get dirty in the backyard. We have to stay clean. We don't let our kitchens get dirty. And I'm not saying things have to be dirty, but I mean, sterile as an operating room isn't necessary for your kitchen. And because some of the bacteria is actually good for us. So uh, let your kids play in the dirt, sand, whatever. And it, it really, in general, is not going to hurt them. So, um, so give them some, some gut biome to begin with, feed, feed that, and then also use probiotics for kids, probiotics for us. And also it helps, it helps your immune system in this time of, you know, worrying about viruses. We should help our, our immune system as much as we can. And that's what uh, probiotics do for us and the, and the bacteria do for us. When you take antibiotics, it kills your gut biome. When you eat chicken or beef that is animals that have been injected with that antibiotics, and I'm not saying they can't, they shouldn't be, because then you'd be eating infected meat. So sometimes it's necessary, but there's a lot of antibiotics that are used in the animals or the meat that we eat. And that really challenges our gut biome because we're eating that antibiotic along with the meat. So make sure that you keep your gut biome happy. You'll know because you'll, you'll have better bowel movements. If at the beginning of it you have diarrhea, you're getting rid of the bad ones. So, okay, then go back to every other day and just get used to it so that you don't have to live with diarrhea. But, but it is a function of getting rid of the bad bacteria. Okay, so that's enough on gut biome, but that's also a lane in toward getting better. And your last is exercise every day. I don't care if you run up and down your own steps 30 times. That's still exercise. I mean, if you go out and run around your yard or you take very brisk walks, not just walks, and nah, 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 brisk walks, like you're pushing yourself to go faster, that is exercise. If you're going to the gym for an hour, that's exercise. If you want to build muscle, you're going to have to do resistance training, which is like weight training. But exercise makes our brains work better. It diverts blood flow to our brain and to our muscles. It burns calories. It activates all of the cells in our body that do burn our food, burn our calories. Um, it helps us get back to a normal weight. If you don't know what kind of exercise you like, then there's a great book called The Eight Colors of Fitness. And it's very basic, but it basically tells, it uses the Myers-Briggs uh, personality uh, test to tell you which type of exercise you'll like and why you won't like other things and why you may not want to do this. So just by your personality, it helps you choose the best exercise for you so you don't go out and do things that you, you're not going to like in the end and then you feel like you failed. So the eight colors of fitness is available on Amazon. My practice at BioBalance is meant to guide and treat you to health. And the basis of that treatment after 40 is get your hormones back. And after that, and with that, you have to follow the other five lanes of traffic to get you to health. And that doesn't mean you can really forget about it. You have to put it in your daily routine and get healthy and help and have your doctor help you get there. So these are these are the types of things that I think is are very important to keeping you healthy the rest of your life. And I try to follow them as much as anybody can, as as my husband does. And I think that um, you have to I have to lead by by example. So um, please hear this and please get healthy. It's important for everything in the United States for our people to be healthy and not sick. I'll see you next week. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.